Hello, welcome to the Last Tackle podcast on LoveRugbyLeague.com, the ultimate home of Rugby League on the web. I'm James Gordon, joined by Drew Dabshire, and this week we've got some added glamour in the studio. <laughs> Sandy Shipley, Toronto Wolfpack, turning into a minor Toronto Wolfpack fan, but turning into a bit of a minor celebrity. Um, I wouldn't call that, but um, I'm just busy on Twitter, shall busy I say. <laughs> okay, thank, thanks for coming in. A um, bit different this week because we're, we're actually filming this, recording this before the weekend, so me and Drew will have a separate chat later on about what happens at the weekend. Um, so basically, this show we're just going to make it all about you and all about, about me. Uh, not, well, and all about Toronto, <laughs> yes, shall we say? So, just give us a little bit of background on obviously you're Canadian, mm-hmm. if you've not already. In guessed. case you haven't guessed, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, just just tell us a little bit how how you got involved with the Wolfpack or or how your journey with following the Wolfpack or whatever started. Yeah, I mean, it all started um, where I was in a meeting and um, I was just doing my thing. And then I had messages from friends saying, uh, have you see, have you heard about this Toronto team? And I was like, what are you talking about? So I said to my client, do you mind me taking this? And um, he says, oh, there's a, a rugby team. Uh, Canadians would just call it rugby. There's a rugby team in Canada, you know, Canadian in England. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you might want to go see. I'm thinking, what are you talking about? A Canadian team in England? So um, I carried on. And at some point I thought, I'm going to have a look and see what this is all about. So I looked at it. There was a game in Salford. And I went to that game and I just got hooked and it was literally that is history and it's been crazy. I've was absolutely it, loved it. Was that was that the, the Challenge Cup yeah, game? That, yeah. And that, was that yeah. the first? That was in the first season, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. It was great. It was just did I get the rules? No, I still don't, to be yeah. honest. Um, I don't think we did. Too. <laughs> but it just shows actually how much the sport is actually so addictive. Hmm. because it's got so many things that we like about hockey, for example. It's got the pace, the, you know, the speed, hmm. the, the, um, the brutality side. We love it. And, hmm. um, and I sometimes think with some sports, you need to understand the rules to, under, to enjoy it. Yeah. The rugby league, you don't. Hmm. And my kids are actually teaching me the rules because they're, they're, they're understanding in their own way. So it's, it's been great. It's really been a journey. So obviously you live over here. Mm. Uh, just tell us a little bit about how you ended up coming over here and how long you've been here. And... Um, so it's a very weird... I wish there was a romantic Hugh Grant story, but there <laughs> isn't. Um, yeah, so I woke up on my 21st birthday and decided to leave. And I left with two suitcases and a thousand pounds two months after that. Right. And that was a long time ago. And you, and you came to England? That was when I you came, came to England, England yeah, yeah. yeah. I flew into Manchester, um, tried Nottingham, lasted three days... Right. And I came to Leeds right. um, and then ended up staying there. There was no plan. I knew I didn't want to go to London. That's one thing I just knew. Um, didn't know I, I'm a Liverpool fan. Don't hate me for that. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're doing well this year, so that's yeah. fine. Um, but yeah, that was kind of it. And I don't know how I got to this point. Yeah. Time's just flown by. And so, and so obviously you lived in Leeds. Did, had you never come across the rugby before from being in Leeds? No, I mean, I've heard of it. But there was never anything to bring new fans in. I mean, I live 10 minutes from the Rhinos mm. and not been to a game. Mm. Um, and I've heard of them, you know, like on TV, mm. but I've never watched it. I know my husband's um, watched it on TV, but it never captured me. There was nothing to say, you know, if you're new, come and watch. There was nothing. So when Toronto came, it was literally the first time I ever, and I still didn't know for a long time that there was two codes. Yeah. I know it sounds, for me, rugby was rugby. <clears throat> Um, but yeah, it's, it's been a learning curve and I've met some amazing people from the sport, like fans who've been teaching me along the way. Mm. So really, really enjoyed mm. that. Um, and it's, it's been a blast. Yeah. It's such a blast. Uh, and obviously you, In had... case you can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously you had a little bit of authenticity to, to games because of your accent and you know, it's like having a, because obviously there's a lot of criticism, I suppose that Toronto gets sometimes because of the lack of the away fans, but you know, was it was it you that you could hear on TV last week? I I spotted. I spotted. <laughs> I spotted Maybe that. apparently you could because yeah. my friends were going, "I can hear you," and I thought it was a joke. <laughs> and I said, "Ha ha, very funny." They're like, no, I can hear you. I'm like, because you think the stadium is big. There's yeah. no way no one's gonna notice. Because I was, I was on, I was on my own that day because mm. the other fans were on the other side, and I had a client, a business colleague with me. So I was actually on my own in a different section to the, to the Wolfpack fans. And I was just, I, I got to autopilot. I just love live sports. I, I actually so, heard you last week because I was, in, I was in the press box and you, and you were slightly to my right. And as soon as uh, Toronto scored and you just heard these I cheers. Just, I just can't And then, help the, it. then the Canadian it's, flags were, were up, weren't yeah, it, yeah, it was, and I really didn't realise that people could hear me. And I, and I don't do it on purpose. And I think sometimes, sometimes people are like, oh, she, she does it 
just to get the attention. No, that is who just I am. And anyone who knows me will know that that's just me. And I suppose I it's can't... not your fault that you're only one of X number of people, whereas if you were one of a thousand people, no one would notice. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? And that's not your fault, per se, because... A thousand Toronto fans aren't all of a sudden going to come to the game from Canada. No, I mean, it, there's been such a shift in, in numbers for Toronto fans. I mean, yes, there's 80,000 expats here in the UK and not everyone loves sports like I do. Mm. But what there is, is that there is a need for community, for being part of something when mm. you live abroad. So what I've been trying to do is trying to engage within the expat community through Facebook and Twitter and just uh, meeting people in, in business o- occasions mm where there is something in common. We are from the same place. We miss home. So what better thing to try to connect home mm. with a rugby game where it's a t- Canadian team. Um, I'm just like, it's from the city I was born and raised. Mm. You know, I'm not from Montreal or anywhere else. So there is that extra element. And that's what I've kind of tried to do is say, look, let's have a meetup. There's a game here in Warrington tomorrow. Mm. Um, this is how much it costs. I'll bring some timber. You know, I, we tr- I try to make is that, it's a reason to come. And then once they do, they generally will stay. And yeah. it doesn't matter where you come from, you know, if you're a British Wolfpack fan or Canadian, but there is something special for me that mm. I always, I, mm. I miss home. Mm. And to have people that are from where I'm from having fun with me, because they're just like me in terms of when it comes to sports. So for the Leeds game, I brought about 50 next pass and they are coming back. Mm. You know, the, all, all of them will be coming back. We've got four coming today. And we've got more coming for my birthday the following week. So it's, it, it will grow, but it takes time because it's trying to build trust online with people is very yeah. difficult. Um, and it's those people who have come to the game that are telling other people, come and, you know, mm. just come for one game. You don't have to come to all of them. Yeah, Not everyone, yeah. I don't expect everyone to come, but it makes it so much more fun. Do you, did, you, did you used to come across any expat Canadians before the rugby, I mean, how how often would you have come across someone like I that wouldn't. in the UK? Yeah. I wouldn't. Um, sometimes, occasionally, just by chance. By, by chance. Um, there's a lot that happens in London because obviously there is mm. a big one there, and then there's also the Canadian pub down in in London. And but there's nothing else around the country, mm. so I kind of took it upon myself to try to bring mm. people together and just try to make a a fun a, a fun day and mm. um and so i've now been trying to engage with the australian and the kiwi communities mm. as well um uh, because you know with sunny bill on site you, you know these people are expats we have something in common yes we're from different countries but we like to feel like we're part of something that isn't british if that makes any sense yeah. so yeah so it's, it's it's been great how how do you uh, how do you find it being in the in the english <laughs> Or the British or the European League, whatever you want to call it. Because, like, you know, I, I've been fairly vocal that I have nothing against Toronto Wolfpack, but I just don't understand the logistics of having a Canadian team in the league over here, if you know what I mean. And do, do, you, feel like, do you feel like it would be different if there was a, an American or a Canadian league and the Wolfpack played in that? Do you think... It's very, it would be very difficult to start a new sport in North America that hasn't got the history. Mm. It's, it's impossible. I mean, obviously soccer is, I would say, the, the latest, the newest mm. of them all. But it's taken a lot of years and a lot, a lot of money. But soccer has got more of a brand than rugby league. Mm. And so to have a Canadian team in one of the best leagues in the world, because it is, mm. that is how you start to get the attention. Now, there's 365 million people in North America. If we can get half a percent interested in rugby league that's a hell of a lot of people mm. and money and you have to start somewhere whether in 15 years time that there's such a demand in north america that they do start their own and that's that's fine but you have to start on the highest platform possible to grab the attention because the market is so saturated in north america but yet you've got 365 people mm. and not all of them are into north american sports you might have some who are into soccer some who are into basketball not everyone's into every sport mm. You know, and, and so if we can try to engage those, and there is a big British expat community in North America, why not tap? That's you know that's a great tap in. Mm. You know, Ottawa is a great city to have a second because also I think it was announced that yeah, they're gonna yeah, have, yeah, yeah. you know Toronto and Ottawa have got a natural rivalry because we've got the hockey and you know there's so eventually hopefully one day when Ottawa do grow to this to the level that Toronto are in hopefully in a few years time whatever the path is that Eric's got whether it's a 10-year plan or whatever, 
at some point, it'd be great to have that natural you know, competition again with mm-hmm. another sport. And that is how it, it will happen. It will happen organically. <coughs> but it just takes time. We don't have 100 years like a lot of these clubs have had. Yeah. And that is what I've tried to say to people is give us time. We're not the answer to a lot of we're not the answer to problems in the sport, but we really do believe we can help contribute to growing such a great sport that I've fallen in love with mm. since I started watching that Salford game. How how difficult you sort of touched on it a little bit there when we were talking about this before. Obviously, there's quite a, an anti. It's weird because the Toronto thing. There doesn't feel to be like a common ground. People are either really anti Toronto or they're really pro. There's no medium. <laughs> yeah, they're really pro Toronto, and it's a bit like, well, why can't we just like just sort of meet in the middle and just let them get on with it? I mean, how, how do you how do you find that sort of situation? Yeah, I mean, initially when I first um, started getting involved with the sport, um, it was probably like thirty percent don't like us, thirty percent like us, seventy percent don't. There was always a reason not to like us. Um, there definitely is a shift. Definitely in the last tw- in the last season, there was definitely more of a shift. It's probably 30% to 70 actually supporting us because I think they can see that we that we are something positive. And usually it's after they've been to Lamport, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Lamport is hard to explain unless you're there. So I hope one day you two get, get, get to go one day because it is so hard to put into words how great mm-hmm. it is. And it does have a good sense of what North American sports fans are like and how much we can help the sport in terms of its growth. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's, it's very difficult because obviously rugby league in this country is, is very much a community game. That's mm. how it started years and years ago. But we're in, a, we're in an era where it's, every sport is now treated as a business. And I think it's so, because they've got it in their hearts, their clubs, they're so afraid of change because generally the word change is, has a negative thinking with people at work Mm. if you say oh we're going to have a restructure everyone thinks the worst because that's just how humans are i think so i think they're just scared because they don't know what it looks like Mm. if someone said to you right in five years time this is exactly what it's going to look like and we've got everything i think people will probably be more receptive to us because they don't know because it's just like let's see how it goes because we don't know it's a two-way partnership here Mm. between i guess the the super league rfl and toronto and the city etc it, yeah, it's hard, but there is definitely a more positive view towards us. I think it's a very small minority. They're just very loud. So you, <laughs> so you feel like it's the positive oh, side? Definitely. Is, is oh, definitely. Oh, definitely. And it, like I said, it's always those that seem to have gone to Lamport. Right. Because I've met a few fans who, they were not <coughs> anti-Toronto, but they were very dubious. And mm. they, oh, how can Canadians or North Americans like a sport that they've never had? But actually, once they've gone to Lamport, like, you guys love sport. I'm like, yeah. I told you, but it's hard to put into words what that means until yeah. you're there. So, like I said, I hope you really I, do get to go one day. I think it's inter- interesting to note that when you do see the ne- the negative side of people um, on social media, they tend to be fans who support teams who are at risk of relegation uh, in Super I, League. I don't. With no disrespect to the likes of Huddersfield or LKR, uh, you don't you don't really see many Wigan supporters, Warrington, St Helens, Leeds supporters. But I think I mean obviously I, I speak of the you know obviously I sport with this and that's well known. I think there's a bit of an I'm all right Jack sort of attitude from them clubs, and I'm not saying I mean I'm anti Toronto because of sport with this, and I'm not anti Toronto per se. I just like to get made around the logistics a bit better. Mm. But I think the reason why people are a bit like that is because I think it becomes a bit. I think the sport's got to decide which way it wants to go. Does it want to have the the big city teams like Toronto? Mm. Because, I mean, we'll talk about relegation in a little while, but obviously it'd be a disaster if Toronto got relegated. Mm. But then how can you say that about one team, but then say, well, actually, it wouldn't be too bad if Hulk KR got relegated? Because that's quite anti-sport, you know, in some ways. My my position on it is, yeah, if you want Toronto and, and the other teams, well, let's try and create a league where that's that's what the teams are, you know what I mean? So yeah. have the big teams, have Leeds or whatever, but then... Because it doesn't really stack up, I don't think. And you, and you might have an opinion on this. Does it stack up for people in Toronto that they're playing against, say, no disrespect to Casford, but a small town in Yorkshire? You know, like it's not like Toronto playing London, for not, instance. Yeah. Is, North is America- that pissy? Is that is there a perception of that in in Canada at all? Of like, well, where on earth Castleford or? Well, a we don't know where some places are. I mean, I must admit, when we played in Championship, I ha- even though I was living here for a long time, I had no idea where some of these places were. The only time I've ever been was to watch the game. Mm. And it's no disrespect. It's just there's no reason for me to go to some of these places. 
I'll tell you one thing is no Canadian fan will ever see any of our opponents in less light because of where they are from. Mm. Whether Castleford or, or Wakefield is a small little town of 500 people mm. or whatever, do you know what I mean? We would not see them any less. We see them as competitive sports teams. Yeah. That is what their identity is. In terms of where they are logistically, we don't care. Mm. We just want to see what's on the pitch. And that's how we've always treated even the Dewsbury's, the Bradford's. When they came to play at Lamport, we were play- We treated them as opponents. Mm. We really didn't care where they were from. But we were learning, you know, mm. oh, where is Castleford? Yeah. Or, so we have Canadians coming over and messaging me saying, look, I'm going to fly into Manchester. Um, do you know an accommodation near this area? And I'll just help them. Not like I've got a clue where things yeah. are, but <laughs> I, I've got a better understanding because I live here. Yeah. Um, but that is one thing I can say is we respect every team, whether they are really small um, from like a scholars team or something yeah, to yeah. whether they're Wigan, we treat them with the same respect no matter where they are um, in, in the country. Um, in terms of... <sighs> It's hard. I mean, Super League is going to be hard, and we know that. And um, no disrespect to any team, but the financial gain... I mean, people who have not been to Toronto mm. really have no idea how big that place is yeah. from a commercial point yeah, of yeah. view or even a fan base point of view. And it's. I'm not saying, you know, whether us going up and Featherstone not going up, there is a commercial value to that. And it's not disrespecting the heritage of the teams. Yeah. But like I said, sports is a business and we have to look at the longevity of it because there's too much competition out there that will take away the attraction from the fans and move them somewhere else. I mean, I suppose in, in one way you can say to Toronto, look, it, it, they've earned their right. It's not like Toronto being parachuted in like other teams have been. They've work the way up just like, any, like, just like Featherstone could have. Do you mm. know what I mean? And I think that's probably one of the big... I asked the question last... Was it this week, last week, whenever? Um, should Toronto have just started in Super League to start off with? And one of the responses to that was, well, actually, if they'd have started off in Super League, everyone would have been having a pop at them because they started off in Super mm. League. Whereas at least this way, they, they started at the bottom and worked their way up just mm. like any other team could. And that's the way I liked it. So when I was asked the question, I said, actually, I'm glad we didn't go straight because I wanted the fans to... Um, respect it wanted to see us that we've earned it Mm -hmm. being in super league is an honor because it means that we've worked hard at it yeah Yeah, you're not you're not in super league because you're toronto yeah you're in super league because because we fought yeah yeah and it doesn't matter how we got there we want fair and we haven't made up the rules Mm. of what is allowed or not from a salary cap or Mm. whatever the rules are because i'm not going to get into rules (laughs) (laughs) because it's way too much work um but I just think we have followed the rules that were given to us that every team has got. Don't hate us for having a, 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 a guy who wants to really do well for the sports and thought, well, if I do this, then we can get there quicker because the city of Toronto will love to have a rugby league team or whatever. And I'm sure if somebody else came and said to a small team, here's two million, mm. You telling me that they're going to say no to yeah. that? They wouldn't. Yeah. And so I don't dislike people being negative towards me or, or the Wolfpack fans because of that. All I'm saying is we've earned it based on the rules that were given to us. And that's all I ask is yeah. don't be mean to me or us and, and say things because we've just we've done what we have to do. Yeah. We don't have 100 years to get there, yeah. you know. And we did what we can because we do truly believe the grow, the sport can grow with us being in it. I think one of the things that I've noticed recently, obviously the last few weeks has been dominated by Toronto and Catalan in the headlines. Mm. And then on the flip side of that, we'll have clubs who'll not, you know, we had players lined up to come in here on a podcast and the club will not allow it. Oh. Okay. You know, another club. And you're just like, well, Catalan and Toronto are dominating the headlines. And then on the flip side, the English clubs won't even let us Top. have a player come in on the podcast. And you're just like, well, hang on a sec. You know, and, and, and Toronto and Catalan aren't necessarily doing anything out of the ordinary, yeah, okay, they've had massively controversial yeah. situation in Catalan and whatever, but they just let things go on. And this club who's not, not allowing us to, to speak to players is one of the clubs who struggle more yeah, for attendance. Struggle to get attendances. Profile. And, um, that, and that's one of the things, in, and it's not, we, we can speak to players, it's just them coming in on this show. Yeah. But I suppose that that's one of the things that maybe Toronto can open the door up, is that you're creating, and people, you're creating 
headlines, if you like, week in, week out, which is a bit like what football... Not me, by the way. But like in football in this country, yeah. obviously, you, you'll know from living over here, football, obviously, there's headlines all the time. And Toronto are almost like... Toronto, to us, are almost like having a... It, we feel like football reporters sometimes because there's enough to talk... Like mm. we, could, we could produce Toronto content every single day because yeah. there's always something to talk about. Yeah. People are interested in it. Mm. And it's like, do you feel like that's another way that Toronto can encourage the other teams that say, look, you know, every team should be talked about as much as Toronto is? Yeah, the thing is, we... Not, we I think we in North America love advertising. It's always mm. free advertising, free article. It's, if you give them the opportunity to talk about you... Mm. Why not? Mm. It's marketing you can't pay for, mm. you know, and allowing players and other people to, to be part of this is just, and that's one thing I don't understand about the sport is I find it very difficult how lack of advertising there is mm. and they don't use, this sounds really, um, don't know what the word is, sexist or whatever, but there's a lot of, um, we live in a very visual world mm. and there's a lot of visual, <laughs> nice players to look at. <laughs> Why don't, teams use that to bring in new people if you look at north american sports every team will have two or three players that become their like models or, mm, or whatever yeah. you know and they are used to attract mark you know sponsors fans whatever yeah and we live such in such a visual world why aren't teams trying to maximize the fact that they've got very athletic guys in there's, no the better, team. there's no better man than Sonny Bill as well, is there? Oh, I met him. He was so, I felt really tall for once. I was actually on the stand and he was at below. So. But yeah, do you know what I'm trying yeah, to say? Yeah, yeah. I, well, I suppose it's, it's, it's extraordinary, really, that you live, you've lived within 10 minutes of Headingley for all this time and it's taken mm. a Toronto <laughs> team to yeah. come over to meet you to go to the rugby. Yeah, it, I, I just think that... And sometimes I get frustrated because I'm thinking the basics aren't being done. Mm. And I'm not saying maybe they, there's different priority that there's more politics involved that no one knows about. But from a new fan perspective, I wish I could just go into Super League and RFL and going, hello, <laughs> like I can tell you from a newbie point of view yeah, this is what nice. is missing. I think I mean you said about change before, and I think that's one of the things that rugby league's held back because you've got like the twelve current club chairmen in Super League, and obviously they're worried about change because it might affect them. You know, and it's a bit like they don't want to vote. They don't want to vote. It's like turkeys voting for Christmas a little bit because Hull, KR, Wakefield, Huddersfield, or whatever, don't want to vote for a situation that's then maybe going to affect them in the future. And I think that's one of the negatives about the way things are currently set up. But why is everyone looking at Toronto and the concept of expansion as a glass half full? Mm. Sorry, a half empty. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking the opportunity mm. is, if you just look at it the other way, it's it's phenomenal, you know. Mm. La- if you support Toronto in succeeding in Super League, we have got the marketing power to bring in a lot of people who then want to invest and go. Where is Castleford? Oh, I might, mm. you know, because the value of Castleford, for example, or Wakefield, will be less mm. than Wigan from a commercial point yeah. of view. So if you have someone in China saying, Do "You know what? I want a piece of that," because Toronto are doing that. He might say, right, I've got 5 million or 20 million I'll put into Castleford. Mm. That is money that they wouldn't have yeah, seen before. Yeah, yeah. So I'm do just you, trying to... Do you think in that case, do, we, do you think that Rugby League overthinks it a little bit? So do you think Rugby League overthinks the fact that, you know, so there's a big thing about obviously it's Northern and, you know, that's always been, people have said that's what holds the sport back. But ultimately that's where the sport is the strongest. Do you think that we overthink it and we think, oh, that's them, and no one's going to be interested in Castleford they want it to be London or they want it to be, you know, Nottingham or big cities or whatever. The thing is the potential. I mean, geographically, I don't know where everything is. I just know it's above Nottingham. That's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just think that even with the teams we've got, we can do so much with it. Yeah. It's just I don't understand the hesitation. Like, what is what are they afraid of? Mm. More investment? Mm. I, I can't understand so these teams have got one hundred twenty thousand pounds extra. Yeah, because they had to run over it. And I'm thinking, why are you still not I, like? I would love to know if I was as a fan of any other team. I would love to know where that money's gone. Because mm. that's a lot of money that they wouldn't have had. Yeah. You know, and, and like and, say, and, if they'd and, chuck and, that into marketing or you know, or some whatever. Of the things you were saying, like yeah. Warrington, I think are brilliant. I'm mm. really enjoying the marketing at Warrington. Mm. And the thing is, marketing doesn't have to cost a lot of money. Mm. 
And that is the perception of, oh, but Toronto, you know, Toronto do events because it's the money. Actually, you can create event atmospheres in a stadium mm -hmm. without costing money because it's called yeah. business partnerships. Yeah, yeah. And if you have, because what you're saying is, right, we're going to have 10,000 people in the stadium. Can you do this event for free? And I'm giving you 10,000 people to look at you. Yeah, yeah. You can't pay. It's, it's marketing that has got more value than actually paying 10,000 or whatever to a TV that people can switch mm. off. Mm. So you're giving them a... And you, men you mentioned Warrington's marketing though. They're, they're the best at it by oh, Country yeah. Mile and Super League. Um, and they're, I'm their wolf. I have a question about <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're the only club in, the, in Super League though who, who are doing the bit to attract new audiences like yourself, mm. um, who, who, are doing, who are trying everything. Uh, and they're the only club who aren't preaching to the converted, if that makes sense, yeah. in Super League. And I, like I said, I wish I could speak to a lot of these heads of teams to really try to understand because I'm really struggling to understand the hesitation Yeah. because I cannot see how we are bad for the sport. And it's not because I think Toronto are, are the best. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that, but the concept, I can't understand why, why, the, why they're against it. I would love to know from a business point of view, why is it bad? Do you think that, that David Argyle or, or, or Bob or, or whatever... Are they going to try and break down some of these boundaries? Do you think that's on their agenda in terms of do they want to say to these super league clubs, look, this is how we think things should be done? And do you think that they do you think they'd get fed up if that isn't re received well? I can't obviously can't speak to for David or Bob, but what I know is what Bob can do. What he's done in North America for Toronto City. He's a very, very smart man. He will be a very respectful man as well to what other concerns are. So I know he will do his best to listen, but try to obviously mm. show them a different way that it's a win-win for everybody. Mm. Um, do I... It's going to be hard. It is hard. You know, when you're constantly being yeah. said no, no, and you can't understand why, because culturally we don't think that way about sport and mm. I think that's the big difference is that North Americans when it comes to sport are just they just think differently mm. and British people or Europeans or whatever they just well I think the difference <laughs> if, if you look at if you look at sort of North American sport it's obviously very franchise orientated yeah. isn't it whereas obviously over over here we don't have that that's not where that's not why sport exists you know if you know what I mean um With regards to that, obviously relegation is a bit of an alien thing in North American <laughs> yes, sports. Yes, it is, yeah. Um, what, what's your thoughts on that? I like it because, I mean, I, I followed soccer for many mm. years. Um, I'm a Benfica fan, so my dad's Portuguese. So I've always, I'm used to watching relegation in, in that sense. Mm. Um, I think it's a good thing because what happens in North America is when you don't have that and you're halfway through the season and your team knows that you're not going to do anything, you kind of just plateau mm. and you just leave and you go, okay, we're rebuilding next year. Mm. I love the relegation because I think it keeps everyone on their toes because mm. even at the last minute, you could go up or down. Yeah. And I think North Americans will love that because it's something that they don't have in any of the sports. So I'm a Blue Jays fan. Last year, even after the third month, we're like, okay, mm. it's a rebuild year. And therefore, everything plateaus. Mm. And um, and that can be, from a fan's perspective, boring. Yeah. Did the, did the fans still go to the games? Oh, yeah, the fans still go. Obviously, there'll be less. I mean, hockey's a big sport. It'll always sell. I mean, we've not won since 1966, but yet it's got a 20-year waiting list for a season ticket. Right. Well, so that's, yeah. I think we'd all love that in every sport, yeah. <laughs> you know, to have that waiting list. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so for me, it's it would definitely bring a new dynamic to the sport that would really bring attention so so actually Toronto being in a relegation battle no we don't actually be, want that <laughs> no, no, but, but you're, what <laughs> you're saying it wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing if, if they were embroiled in it but then stayed up in the end yes I think it's just something that we had to get used to but I think we'd like it but even I think fans from any team to know that you're fighting till the end obviously we don't yeah, want to be I, there but if you I'm a massive you know yeah, I'm, I'm a massive advocate of promotion relegation just because I think that for those reasons you say really it keeps that bit of interest You know, if you get if you're halfway through the season and you can't get playoffs, then you're just sort of running the mill. Whereas the relegation means you've got 
uh, there's interest in those games. And we saw it last season in Super League where it went to the very last game and there was four teams that could get relegated. Yeah, could that's not relegated. happened, I guess, ever or mm. for a long time. Um, I don't know. Well, actually, they didn't have, they didn't, we haven't had relegation right, for okay. a while. Not for a while. Um, so. right. I mean, it has gone to the last game in the past. Like There was a big game. Casper okay. played Wakefield one year and, and that was like whoever went down. I remember, um, I think Casper went to the last game of the season a few oh, seasons Wakefield. before that as well. I think they... they yeah. Um, so... It, I think it happens more often than not. I think it'd be very rare. I'd be very surprised if we get to a point where the team that's relegated is down five games before the end of the season because I just think that the league's quite competitive yeah. now and I'd be surprised if that situation The thing happened. is, if there isn't relegation, I think my concern would be, in a way, is what happens to the championship? Mm. Yeah. I mean, those clubs, and that is one of the problems. Like, think, you mentioned Feverston I, before. Yeah. Feverston were... Feverston were the top team in the championship under Darrell Powell for a good three or four years, about ten years ago, and there was no promotion. So even oh, okay. though they were winning, they were winning the championship, or they were certainly winning league leaders. They might have them lost in the grand final, or whatever. There was no promotion to Super League, and that was very frustrating for them because it's a glass ceiling because yeah. you can see Super League there, but you can't actually get into it. Yeah. Um, and obviously that that was a very frustrating time what, for fans. What I don't like though about it is that. When you win championship, you still have to play yeah, something. Play the, I, yeah. I find, Trod, we were just going, hold on a minute. We've won 23 out of the 24 <laughs> games. I mean, it wasn't so bad last... And we still have to... Yeah, to do that. Play, it wasn't, it wasn't, like, it was, I, I think Toronto... That not, really is weird. Yeah, like, yeah. How the, does that work? The year Toronto lost to London, yeah. they got absolutely mugged off that year because they won, what was it, 22 out of 23 yeah. games in championship. Then they won five out of seven, yeah. which included beating Super League teams, and then they still didn't get promoted. They got really mugged off, and obviously I'm glad that that system I think, got yeah, scrapped. But I think, in a way, I know some fans won't agree with me, but I think it was a, in high, it was a good thing we didn't mm. go through. I think we still needed a lot to, to, you know, a lot to learn. Um, but last year, I went to the final, and I was like, at halftime... Now this again. <laughs> it was hard at halftime. So I was like, oh my God, where's the cider? I need to... Yeah, yeah. Well, I've been there. I've seen my team yeah, lose and, two. And yeah. And I, yeah, but that concept of you won the division. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you still have to fight to go up where I think, like in... Um, Soccer here. Yeah, yeah, they should have. If you're first and second, you got automatic, but it's that third place. Yeah. And then, or I think the bottom three in the Premiership the go, down, go down. Yeah, yeah. But the, the ones in the bottom, you, you have automatic... I think that's better because it gives some reward. Because what's the point? Of tr- what is actually the point of mm. getting to first place? I don't. Mm. That's what really got us confused. Uh, and, yeah. and obviously, it's, I mean, American sports are obviously very playoff orientated, like the hockey and stuff. Mm. Um, so obviously, the the whole playoff concept isn't alien to to you no. because you know for the Super League yeah. playoffs, I should say, and the grand final. Yeah. Obviously, there's a lot of argument over here that if you finish first in Super League, you should be the champions. But because we don't have the relegation, the, the suit, the, our our target is just to get to the Stanley Cup or to yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. You know, the the playoffs. That yeah. is our main goal. Yeah. You know where in 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 rugby, if the season kind of finishes in September, and then you like it's yeah, yeah. It, there is a perp. Do you know what I mean? Because it just it works. I mean, yeah, I yeah. I get frustrated with the playoffs myself because. Toronto Maple Leafs, for example, is, they do well. They get there and they lose in the first round, and it's like, <laughs> well, it's over. <laughs> you know, but then you got the Raptors who. You know, it was incredible. Mm. The two million people on the streets. Yeah. And I was here. Because I remember when Toronto Raptors came as a concept. Mm. And the Toronto newspaper had a competition on to name the team. Right. And I was in school at the time. And, and all the kids got a chance to, to, come, to up name, with, right. come up with a team name. With a picture and a name. And at the time, Jurassic Park was the movie oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and so it got to there was a there's a picture on my phone where it had the top 100 shortlisted names <laughs> and the raptors were there and um so it was actually voted by people right. for the raptors and i love that story well they, their, their coach actually was coach at manchester yeah um, years and yeah. years ago so uh, yeah. a nice little connection there <laughs> what what um so how do you see it developing then what you know from what you know and from what you see and obviously being with the fan base and stuff, how how do you see things going for in the next few years? In terms of in, just in terms of the wolf pack, right? So um, there is a, a definitely a growth within fan base in Toronto. Definitely, um, there's a lot of um, independents who are creating rugby league clubs, miniature yeah. ones in their own local area in Barry, etc. And until and, and so things are happening, mm. we're just not publicizing it because they're not necessarily connected to Toronto. But mm. what's happening is 
the parents and the kids are watching the game yeah. and mm-hmm. they're really loving it. So they kind of want to do their own thing. And slowly, once we get into schools, which there are some fans that I know who've taken the coaching course. So they got level one coaching right. and they are teachers in their own school because they can't have it as part of the curriculum. They're doing it themselves. Mm-hmm. So it's at their own cost. So there's a lot of things happening that people don't know about because people are just doing it for the love. Mm. They're not getting paid extra for this or anything. They really are. They fall in love like I have mm. for a sport that is new to, to, to many of us. Um, and over here, I think the more people get to give us a chance, because that's all we ever ask is give us a chance. We want to help. Let us be part of it. Yeah. And more and more people have opened their arms. Like, Come and join us and, and talk to me and, 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 and other fans. The fan base will grow. I have no doubt about it. There's more media coverage in, in Canada and North America than there's ever been. Mm. I mean, when you live in a country where um, every minute in any TV or newspaper is, is, is precious because mm. there's so much, so much sport yeah. in North America, to try to get one minute of coverage is like, oh my God, that's a minute. And I remember two years ago, it was, I think we got the sun. That was the first time we had something. Like, oh my God, that's great. But last year, it was everything. TV, sports, it was just ongoing. And, and Yahoo Canada. So to see that we are in, getting into the saturated market from a, a marketing point of view, articles and stories, that is just fantastic. But people don't know about it because they don't follow these platforms yeah, like yeah. I do. Yeah, yeah. So to see the difference from like 18 months ago to now, it's it's just... what Obviously, Lamport is, is almost like... Pre- unique. <laughs> well, yeah, but it's like creaking a little bit because you're, you're selling... The, the, it was a sellout, was it? The final, which was a around... more than ten, sellout. <laughs> uh, around about 10,000. Mm. What do you think the potential... You know, what, what happens... Obviously, you want to... If you're selling out already, yeah. you want to expand. How do you see that going? And, and what, what do you think is a realistic attendance for, for a Toronto game? So, I, th- I think, but because of fire rig, etc., I think it's like 9,500, 10,000. Mm. Um, I think they're going to look at that again because there's been some refurbishment. So, therefore, mm. hopefully, the fire rigs will allow us to have some more. But there's potential to grow within Lamport. The good thing is we've got the mayor of Toronto backing us up because right. he went to the game, he loved it, he can see the potential. It is owned by the City Hall, so obviously we have to work with them. Mm. Um, Bob Hunt is very inspirational. What he did for Toronto FC, you know, you can't yeah, pay yeah. for that. So we're we're very lucky to have him in on our corner in a sport he doesn't know much about. And he was the first one to say, "I don't know much about rugby league, but I'm learning." Mm-hmm. And he likes what he sees. Um, there is potential to have, say, maybe temporary standing for a bit. So we can have more people. Right. But I think my concern is that if we were to move to a venue that is bigger, say BMO, mm. it will take away the magic. Because yeah, because it's better to have a yeah. it's better to have a small stadium that's full. Full, and, yeah. and you sort of see that at Wigan. Yeah. With what, you know, with all due respect to Wigan, Wigan play in a twenty five thousand stadium, and when it's half full, it looks a bit. And I think it's trying to get the right balance of when is the right time that yeah. we know. I mean, this is the first year in Super League. Now, knock on wood, we're going to be there next year. Mm. If we are, there's enough data to understand the demand. Yeah. Mm. You know, we don't know what Super League clubs will bring. You know, I yeah. think Wigan said a hundred, uh, fifteen hundred, or whatever. So until we actually know, so I think last I think year, quite, I think totally yeah. quite surprised at how many Super League. Yeah, because well, obviously they've not, there's not really been teams in the championship with huge fan bases. I think Bradford were the biggest with five hundred. Yeah, or something. that and, was that and, was quite well, a shock. Oh, <laughs> and that's the thing. I think I yeah. think they will be when Hull go, even yeah. Casford, uh, uh, no one's you know, yeah. There'll be loads of people from Super League. Going. And I think once we know, so on average, I think last year we had maybe about eight thousand, maybe seven thousand, mm. eight thousand on average without the final. Don't have yeah, the yeah, final. Yeah. Or the opening game, because that's obviously a very yeah, yeah. thing. But on average, maybe seven to 8,000. And that's just me guessing based on, on, on mm-hmm. numbers. If we can sell out more consistently, because we know... Because obviously, John from Toronto will have an idea how many each team have sold, because I think each one had a code. So yeah, there's yeah. an understand. I think that will give us data to understand actually how big this will be. Mm. So this year, it might be, it's going to be a growing pains of learning yeah. being in Super mm. League. There's a lot of learning from, from every aspect of the club. And you'll notice you know? that the first, certainly the first three or four years, Super League teams will bring loads. It might, it might 
ease off a yeah, little bit yeah. when the novelty wears off, which it has with Catalan, really. Like, there's nowhere near as many people who go to Catalan now. But Toronto's different. The but there's yeah, that's so much. I mean, the because... thing is, Toronto has just got so much to do. I mean, mm. I know people who go there from Friday to Monday and they're like, I need to go back because there's yeah, no way yeah, yeah. I can. Because there is so much to do. No matter what hobbies you're into, yeah. there's art and there's sports and then there's, um, other, there's so much fashion, mm. food. I mean, the food in Toronto, the restaurants are just amazing. You've got some mm. of the best. Um, restaurants in the world and if you've got hobbies that you want to try out and, and do different things that is a city mm. to go mm. um and obviously you got you're very close to new york so people i know from leeds rhinos are going to go to toronto first yeah, and then yeah, yeah. go to new york and then do a long yeah. trip so geographically where it is it's an extra holiday for somewhere else mm. this is just a, a, a stop to so, so it's definitely i would say slightly different to catalan because mm. of where it is yeah. and how different it is yeah, yeah. and and I don't think the novelty wear will wear off because of all because these other the things yeah, the that there is. You, it's probably what, cheaper, by the way. I think uh, to get uh, Toronto. <laughs> I bought my flight to Catalan because I'm yeah, going to yeah, I'm yeah, going yeah. to the um, Catalan game in April. And I'm thinking I'm sure I can fly to Canada <laughs> cheaper. To that. But yeah, so I think that will be a lot easier as well. Is actually getting there. <laughs> what? How do you, how do you and how do other Wolfpack Wolfpack fans feel about the the home game situation where you know because of the climate and and whatever you end up having to play three four five home games sort of on the road away from home they've just accepted it you know we don't hold grudges mm. against things that are obviously unless we get our own stadium which if, if you're in toronto all, all the sports stadiums are nearby and yeah. they're downtown yeah. they're not like in the uk where it's in, it's in like yeah. nowhere yeah. like you know warrington it's not actually you know obviously warrington is in the middle but in some places it's yeah. actually like outside Salford, a bit out, out like out where am i going you know mm. so I think they just accepted it and they just are just happy to have a team. Mm. I mean, Canadian fans are very happy. Yes, we can get grumpy against sometimes, you know, in, in other sports, but we are very happy. If you're not, we're very happy people mm. would, and would, we love sports. So we're not going to hold it against it. We're just happy to have a you, team. Would you rather they played all of the games over here in one place? You know, so obviously they've, they, they played the game at Headingley first after playing in Warrington against St. Helens. So they have like a home from yeah, home. Yeah, so almost like they say the Toronto Wolfpack's home in the UK is here and any home games that Toronto have will be played here. Personally for me, no. Because for me, I get to go to places I've not been before. Mm. You know, um, London, I don't go off into London. So obviously if we had one in London, it'd be my chance to go. Mm. Um, York, you know, I, I love the chance, and it for us from an expat point of view, there are fans all over the country. So if there's an opportunity to have a game in a place that normally wouldn't have a game, yeah. I think it's great. Yeah. I love that side because, like I said, I mean, I, I work a lot of hours and I'm self employed, etc. So I don't really get a chance to go elsewhere apart from big cities sometimes. So yeah, to be yeah. able to visit places that I wouldn't necessarily go to, I really like that. Um, and yeah, yeah, that's that's just my. I don't know about everybody else, mm. but for me, I like that, that diversity. What obviously you get a bit of uh, abuse and and stuff. Do from I? Time don't to know. Time. <laughs> um, how how do you how do you find that side of side of things? Very confusing to be honest. <laughs> um, I don't understand the need for some words that are used. Um, I've been very personally for me. I've learned. By having some great friends who've taught me to have thick, thick skin, <laughs> uh, because it was very hard to understand some of the words being used against me as if it's my fault yeah. or. And I understand people don't like change, but is there a need to be a certain way? Mm. There's ways of expressing not liking something in a different way. Yeah. Um, but that is social media. Yeah. And. And I'm learning myself when I speak for that, that you can just, um, you can block somebody yeah. and actually they wouldn't say that to your face. Yeah. And that is the difference because if I, have, if I, the hatred or the, 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 the attacks we've had online, if, if I actually translated that to the stadium, it's never actually happened. No. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. I think, do you know what? It's maybe a very small percentage and I don't want to generalize people. Mm. Or fan bases, because every fan's got an idiot. Yeah. Or five. You know what I mean? <laughs> every club and every sport around the world. Or 200. Oh, no, no, no. But for me, I just take it on that one person. That person doesn't like me, 
you're switched off. Mm. You know, Absolutely. and I, That's a good, right. and I That's try, a and I just try to debate people. I don't. Mm. I'm not saying that they are wrong. Mm. I never do. I never say you're wrong for saying that. Mm. What I say is, I'm trying to understand yeah. why you don't. I want to, the root cause of your. I'm in my business head. Yeah, what is the root cause yeah. of you not liking me or not liking Toronto? Yeah, and then debate that. I like to have debates. Yeah, but what I want is a respect of my answer. Yeah. Just as much as I do respect the answer of somebody else, mm. if that makes any sense. Well, there's, there was obviously a lot of talk. Obviously, there's been talk about salary cap. There was talk about Greg Worthington being added to the squad. But it's like people were sort of throwing the toys out of the pram, even though the fact, if you look at that Greg Worthington example, for instance, Wakefield did exactly the same last season with a different player. Obviously, the Tony Geese, I think they're, they're doing things that are sort of within the rules, so it's not their fault. Everything we do is magnified by 100 mm. in everything. What water we drink, <laughs> what t-shirts but, we wear. But actually, that but, is, you know I mean? but, but actually, that is one of the one of the good things, one of the positives of Toronto in some way. Yeah. Because you want imagine if 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 all Super League clubs everything they did was magnified by a hundred, then the sport would be much bigger, wouldn't it? Yeah, but it's but everything's magnified by a hundred in a negative way. Right. That is a problem. You know the Greg thing. Mm. We've not broken the rules. Yeah. Somebody on Twitter explained how it's legal. Mm. Like I said, I don't know the rules, but somebody explained it. And I said, why is that everything we do, mm. whether it's the fans or the team, it's magnified by 100, but mm. in a negative direction. Yeah. I've never... Obviously, this is a very small minority. Yeah, yeah. I'm making that clear. Because a lot of us do support us. and say, oh, you know, the marketing that Sunny builds. I get... But when there is a opportunity of being negative it's that big mm. and I don't get that but I get it I in a way of, where I'm like it's going to be part of it it's oh, always yeah. going to be there a lot of it is, jeal- is down to jealousy as well and, I mean the other thing is is don't forget that part of it is down to people's perception of the RFL as well so people there's probably a lack of trust that people don't trust the RFL not to be doing the wrong thing if you know what I mean yeah. so there's a little bit of conspiracy theories anyway from people I don't get they, conspiracy theories yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no but but I think I think it's not necessarily just a Toronto thing I think it's more the case of people have sort of badged the RFL and say oh it'd be typical if they allowed them to do this even when they've not but and that's, I think that's the RFL we're not the RFL yeah, yeah. we were given a set of rules from day one which we followed we've mm. not bent them mm. we don't we've not done that it's not our fault I get it. Every sports fan around the world will have issues. In baseball, for example, with the Astros and the cheating, yeah, yeah. there are scandals everywhere. Yeah, yeah. People will hate the organization of every sport. 5%. It will happen. Mm. But we are not the no. RFL or Super League. Mm. If you give us rules, 1 to 10, we do them. Mm. Don't hate us for that. Mm. You know, it's, that is the difference that I'm mm. trying to say. I get it. You don't like the RFL or Super League. Mm. But all I ask is be nice to us. Yeah. And well, you know, like I said, most of them are welcoming, very, very welcoming. It's just a small minority that sometimes make it difficult. How, how do you find it? Or obviously, you speak to people back home. Is it funny for them that the season started and they don't get to see the team until like end of April? Do they still follow it as closely? They definitely follow it, but it's difficult when the TV's not there. Yeah. Mm. That is the biggest frustration with any Wolfpack fan back home is that, yes, we accepted it before, but we watched them on TV. There was viewing parties. There was, it was on TV. And it's been so difficult because of the TV rights and I don't get what they are, etc. But it's like they've made it so difficult for us to be able to have our own for... Because how are you... Because in hockey... Not every Toronto Maple Leafs fan goes to a hockey game because it costs too much money. Yeah, and they play but like how, do they games, grow, how do they grow the sport? By TV. Mm. There are so many fans who just watch the game on TV, but yet they still support it by then buying merchandise and blah, 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 and so on. Also watching the game, mm. creates money, etc. If they're not allowing Toronto to have a TV deal mm. to open up the market so that when the season does come to Toronto, there's more of an interest... Mm. They're not helping. Mm. I mean, when, when Vegas had a new hockey team, mm. all of the hockey teams around said, look, if you need a hand, if you need help, we're here to support you. We want you to succeed. Back home and myself were thinking, all I'm hearing is, we can't wait to you to be I'm literally sitting down waiting for you to go, I told you so. Mm. That is the impression I get from some people, is that they're mm. just waiting 
to make it really difficult and say, look, I'm going to prove that this is this was wrong in the first place. Yeah. That is my interpretation. And is, I think some of them as well. Is it see, the TV deal they've sorted? Is that for Toronto's home games only? Is that I the think, one that they've done? Yeah, so I think it's the home games. And it's also, I think the St. Helens next week will be on TV oh, right, as so well. It's there's, be an ten day, there's an extra 10, ten games that are from the initial yeah, eight the or initial. whatever. Yeah. Thing, but still not enough. Yeah. And I know, having spoken, Bob's tried so hard. Mm. You know, he has tried and it's like, <laughs> hands yeah. are tied. And it's hard, you know. TV is the way you grow audiences mm. because people want to watch it first before they commit to $50 or whatever it is to go to a game. Mm. Just like over here. Yeah. You know, people will go to a game live eventually if they watch it enough on TV yeah. that they, do you know what, might, might want to see what it's like. Mm. Um, but no, I just feel so fortunate being a Torontonian living here that I'm able to, to with my family, because I couldn't do any of this without Mike and, and, and the kids who also love live sports and come with me to the games. Because as any parent will tell you, when you got kids, their diaries somehow take control over yours and they are the ones that dictate where you go. Hmm. So from my point of view, I feel very lucky that it's like I've written the story. Yeah. You know, you told me 18 years ago that there'd be a Canadian team in the UK where I live now and I can follow them and support them. It's like, are you on drugs? <laughs> you know? So for me, I feel extremely fortunate in so many ways that yeah. I, I am in the position I am, hence why I'm a bit mental. <laughs> <laughs> will, will you miss it? Obviously, you'll go to Canada at some point, yeah. I suppose, yeah. but you'll miss, obviously, the home some home games or... Um, I've, I've scheduled my trip to Toronto when they are there. So I don't miss any of the UK games. So right. when I come back, we're just here in time for the whole game. Right. <laughs> and so you'll, you'll obviously so get miss, to a few games there. I'll, but... miss, I'll have some games there. and um, But like I said... There you are can games. watch them on TV over yeah, the ones in the, Yeah, I mean, I, when, when the games are in Toronto, I generally will tend to have some parties at home. So I'll bring right. people who've not been to a game before or who have. And we kind right. of have pizza, beer, poutine donuts and we watch the game together so nice. we kind of have our own little party which is quite nice, nice. No, yeah it's good it's yeah. excellent well yeah hopefully we'll get over there at some point yeah um, whoever is their boss you know uh, <laughs> it's part crossed. of market research yeah, we, can, sure. we, can, we can get apart, to france apart, <laughs> we, we got to france and spain but that's about research as as it's cheap i'm telling you it's cheaper to go to toronto than it is to go to casala um before we let you go sandy drew's got his uh his 13 quick, quick, quick fire questions. questions oh my so god you didn't tell me about this yeah. are they are they all innocent questions I think so. they're gonna be in trouble are, right okay so we'll go, we'll start now. Uh, favorite player? Um, Maddie Russell. How is he not Sonny Bill Williams? Oh uh, no, his shoulders got really nice shoulders. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Who who's Sonny Bill or Matty Russell? Russell. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm I'm seeing this on, on Twitter. Who's got the best pie? At the moment, so it has to be Wigan because I've only tried two. Yeah, but I, if I say anything else, I think I'll be shot somewhere. <laughs> yeah, well, solid <laughs> solid choice. Uh, favorite rugby league memory so far. The final in, in October. Yeah. Having been there. Uh, Favourite other team apart from Toronto in Super League? It'll be Leeds because of the welcome that they gave us when we were there in the season opener. Right. Definitely. The best game you've ever been to? It has to be the final in October. Who will win Super League this year? Based on my fantasy teams, etc. I think <laughs> it'll be St. Helens. Right. Uh, number one thing to do while in Toronto? And this this might not be involved with rugby league. This could be. Um, Any recommendations for fans? Going to. It's too much to do there. Actually, try the cuisine, trying the food, trying the different restaurants that you normally wouldn't get here. There's a lot. Best place to to stay in Toronto. Downtown in the area of Lower Simcoe and Bremner. That area is very good. Got everything nearby. A Toronto del- delicacy we should try. Beaver tail. Ooh. It's not Ooh. actual beaver, okay? Uh, I'll make it because it's called beaver tail. So deep fried pastry with a nice topping. And do you know what? Blake Wallace, he's got a Canadian girlfriend and he's still not tried it. I've told him off many times. Like, how have you not? Had it? Yeah, beaver <laughs> I'd tail. I imagine the try name's it. probably put him off. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. But yeah, beaver tail. I always say try. It's really good. Uh, who, who's your tip for Man of Steel this year? Um, oh, you asked me a question on players I don't really know, so I'm going to pick a Toronto player just because they're really the only players I know. <laughs> um, 
I'll say Sonny Bill just because I think it'll be against the age thing and him being from Union to League. I think it'll be quite a nice little story. Yeah. A nice mm-hmm. story to tell. Search all Roosters this weekend. Um, I'm going to say Roosters just because an expansion's different. I'm going to go against everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go against everybody else and say Roosters. Uh, worst ground you've been? Oof. That's a bit mean. There's no worse ground. Oh. But... Um, in terms of distance for me, it was Bear Row because it was so far. <laughs> that was literally, the fans were really nice, but it was so far for me to go to. But yeah. Well, which ground would you least like to go again? Um, God, that's hard. Think of some to... championship ones. I can, I can list some championship. <laughs> I'm League One. I can list some of them. Um, God, that's really hard. Um, least for any reason. No, no, just... just... Um, you didn't like the vibe or you didn't uh, like the ground or the pitch. That's really hard because I've not been to I've been to many, but there's different reasons for different things. But I'll say, sorry, witness. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I know that everyone, but witness, uh, don't hate me now. He's gonna uh, like. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, finally, any other sporting teams you follow? So, Raptor, well, here in the UK. Well, like no, anyway, anyway. So, Toronto Raptors, Maple Leafs, um, Benfica Football Club, um, Liverpool, as I mentioned, um, Rafa Nadal. Yeah. I know he's a mix. Some people are Federer. So. But no, <laughs> but generally, I, I love live sport. Any live sport for me is great, even though I might not understand. I've not done Union yet, a yeah. Union game. So I might try just to say I've been to one. Yeah. But from what I've seen on TV, it's not very little, not much fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it's very. Yeah, it, it's obviously it'd be a very different to experience to a rugby league game or. Uh, yeah, I'll yeah. I'll stick to league. You, I mean, I'll definitely stick to league. It, it's one. interesting that Toronto. Obviously, I've seen. Um, I think it's Eric who said this a few times where they just talk about rugby, don't they? In Canada. Yes, and I've got and I've, slated. Yeah, because obviously time. that's a very big thing for us over here. Is that I found rugby this. league is very different to rugby union? Yeah, because in North America, rugby is rugby. Yeah, and I remember when I first started following Toronto. Oh my god, social media was awful to me because they were just literally saying it's rugby league, but I just couldn't get it in my head. That it was such an offensive thing. It seemed yeah. like I was offending I, I people. Think it's, I think it's more because people, are, obviously, because rugby league's been persecuted against in the past. I think it's the concern that I think people are looking at Toronto thinking, oh, if Toronto grow rugby league, you don't want rugby union to sort of steal it away. Yeah, almost. I mean, we got now we've got Toronto Arrows, who yeah. are the union team. So there is now more of a, an understanding of the two different. Mm. But initially, it was just rugby. Mm. And. Thank you to everybody who made it clear the difference. And I did choose the right one, I must admit. I chose the, the right rugby to follow. Excellent. Well, Sandy, thanks very much for, well, for coming for in. I hope you... In, well, we'll look out for you on the on the TV and stuff throughout the I season, sh- no doubt. Um, yeah, thanks for your time well, and for coming in as well. Well, thanks for the invite. Appreciate me, it. Me and Joe will be you. back very shortly to talk about the weekend's action. But Go on thanks. back! We've had a costume change, we're back, just me and Drew now to review the weekend's games and look ahead to next weekend, Drew. Um, we'll start with Super League last week, so there was no Thursday games, but there was a few on Friday that, that conjured some interesting scores. Castleford 32, Wakefield 15, I suppose an expected win for Castleford in that one. Yeah, but Wakefield were actually 15-14 ahead at half-time, uh, thanks to a spectacular finish from Tom Johnston. Uh, if you've not seen it already, I, I would suggest uh, searching it on the old YouTube and uh, and having a look. It was a freakish finish. Um, but Castleford was just too clinical in the second half. Uh, they blew Wakefield uh, away. Uh, Trinity didn't have, have many answers for what Castleford were throwing at them. I was impressed with um, Daryl Alfords as well. He's, he's, he's obviously made the move over, over the off-season from Salford. Uh, he's impressing. I don't know if I agree with... I was going to uh, say, Phil, were, you, Phil, were, you, were you as impressed as Phil Clark? Yeah, Phil, Phil Clark made the, the comment, was he Salford's best player last season or something like no, that? No, didn't he, he say he was the best signing of the off-season? Oh, no, like yeah, no, but I also, I think he said he was one of Salford's top three players or something last season, but he didn't, and I, and I checked the stats after the game and he did play in Salford's last 11 games. Well, uh, I must admit, <laughs> we, I was in the press box at Warrington and a few of us got the text, like a text saying, Phil Clark just said they're all offers, and everyone was like, what? Um, 
So yeah, I think I think I've read Casper have now won 14 in a row against Wakefield, something like that. Um, Hull KR4, Huddersfield 22. Huddersfield continuing their really good start to the season. They've won three on the spin all the way from home. Hull KR had that promising start against Wakefield, although Wakefield were poor in that first game. But they put up a decent fight against Hull FC, but have had two probably disappointing losses since. Yeah, they started the season... Well, as you say, even when the in the the loss to Hull FC, I was still pretty encouraged by the performance. But then the the, the most recent two games have, have been atrocious uh, from the Robins. I'm a, I'm getting a little bit worried for them now. Uh, I must say, but I think we should probably give more credit to to Huddersfield rather than Slated uh, Hull KR. I've been really uh, impressed by Hull I'm quite happy with, start to the season. I'm quite happy with Huddersfield because I actually tipped them to surprise a few people before the start of the season and it's not often that I get a tip right. So <laughs> uh, I'm quietly happy that uh, Huddersfield are doing well. Um, I was at Warrington who beat Toronto 32-22. Again, another, li- another loss for Toronto, but when you look at the four games they've played, OK, Casford ran over them a little bit, but they've certainly been competitive against Salford, Wigan and Warrington. And don't forget, all four of those teams finished in the top five last season. Um, the game sort of tipped a little bit for me. Toronto got a really controversial try right at half-time, which gave them a sort of a way back into the match. It went from 20... It should have been 22-6 at half-time. It ended up being 22-12. And they really give Warrington a fright in that second half. And to be fair, the score makes it sound like a... Not a comfortable win, but the 10 points, it was probably a lot closer because Warrington scored a try, a converted try right at the end. It was 22 all at one point, and then Warrington had a couple of penalties to nudge him in front, but Toronto were really knocking um, in that last 10 minutes. Yeah, everyone always is, is mentioning the, the Toronto try that shouldn't have been a try, but it's probably important to note that, uh, was it Gareth Woodham's yeah, 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 try? Yeah. I think Storm, Storm Dennis... Uh, Took, took the ball <laughs> about three or four yards forward. And the rest. I think, I think, I think Lyon had let go of it on one line and, and when it was practically at the other line when he caught it. Yeah, there was a, there was a tweet going around, wasn't there, saying uh, it reminded them of a forward pass on Rugby League Live. And if, <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. if you play Rugby League Live, you'll certainly know what, what I'm on about. Um, t- uh, with Toronto, I know they've not, they've not won a game yet and uh, I'd probably hastily say that they won't beat Saints this weekend, but uh, there are... Uh, positive signs coming out of the Wolf Pack. Uh, the the very first game against Castleford, I, I, I was w- very worried about them. Uh, I thought you were absolutely abysmal in defence, but they've tightened it up a little. Uh, Brian McDermott's working his magic uh, with Toronto, it seems, and they're pushing the big teams all the way. They're still waiting, obviously, for Chase Stanley to come back. Obviously, Gijo played. They were a lot better, I must admit. When for free? Yeah, for free. Gijo came off the bench. And when he went to full back and Gareth O'Brien went into to half back, they were a lot better. So whether that's how they'll play, um, I still have question marks over Maloudi. I think rocks and diamonds, isn't it? I think he's just a bit. I think for this, I don't think he's the sort of player that Toronto necessarily need at the moment. They need someone who's a bit, you know, with all disrespect to Maloudi, like you say, he's a bit. He blows a bit hot and cold. He's a bit ill disciplined. I think if they could get, you know, a, a, some. A, you know, if Stanley comes back and plays centre, I think that would make them a bit more solid. Um, on Saturday, Leeds beat Salford 22-8. Salford were actually winning 8-0 and Leeds scored a try right on the hoot at half-time and then blew him away second half. A few people started to murmur that they were a little bit worried about Salford, but um, Ian Watson's more worried about the referees. Yeah, I'm, I'm not worried about Salford, to be honest. Uh, I think they'll be, they'll be fine um, compared to the competitors down at who we would say are at the bottom of the table in probably Hulk are, um and Wakefield. Um, but, yeah, Ian Watson's post-match comments, let's have a little talk on that. He mentioned that he's tried to contact head of, of uh, match official Steve Ganson. Uh, is it four times, he said? Mm. Uh, and not one, once that Ganson has got back to him, which I kind of respect Watson for saying that because... That is an issue, isn't it? it well, I mean, that's a massive because I mean, what Steve? If Steve Ganson's full time at the RFL, what is he doing five days a week? That means he can't listen. There's only twelve Super League coaches. But the, but then I, all, I, I don't agree with Watson's comments where he said that. Well, he, he kind of hinted that he thought Marcus Griffiths yeah, he, were without were, doubt was, he's, he's, um, an inexperienced ref. Let's not bag the refs because 
if say if Marcus Griff Griffiths um, attempted to step down now or, or wanted to to walk away from the game, that's one one less professional. Yeah, and then someone even more inexperienced has to come exactly. in to do that. The reason why Marcus Griffiths is probably referring to Super League is because you look at the refs that we've lost over here. You know, you, you had Tim Roby. You know, we had Ian Smith in here. I know it's nearly ten years since he went. Richard Silverwood when Ben Thaler's obviously suspended at the moment and it's like you know there's countless other referees you know that probably slip the memory and it's like the referee the, I understand Ian Watson's got grievances with Steve Ganson but you can't keep bagging the ref every week when they lose because and, and don't forget he did exactly the same we're, we're, we're all fans of sports in general we're all fans of sporting teams whether it be in rugby league or other, other sport we all we all have a moan at the ref at some point don't we if, if yeah, and I, if, if there's, no, there's no problem with moaning about them. I've got, questioning their integrity yeah. and calling them biased. I've, 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 got, I've got no problem with having a moan and saying, oh, what, what are you doing, ref? It, it, because that's all part of the game. We've all done it. We've all been there. We all do it. We, we all bag the ref. But let's not question the integrity where we Because he never comes out, he'll never come out and criticise the ref when he makes a bad decision in favour of something. Yeah, because I think it was I think it was a line, something along the lines of. Um, he, the uh, the referee washed his hands with salt for once the fans got on his case yeah. or something yeah. like that. Watson said, and, and I I think it's it's inappropriate to uh to say really. I think it might have been in the heat of the moment. Uh, I think a couple of days later, I don't think Watson would be saying that. He, he was probably frustrated I, with the outcome of the game. Um, but I just I just don't think it's it's fair really because a referee they don't they don't go out to no. There's no way Watson. You know what I mean? They don't like go out to. There's no way that the referee is officiating against Salford. That's just, obviously, Ian Watson's looking at it mm -hmm. through his rose-tinted spectacles. And I'm not saying that the referee would have had a perfect performance, but certainly the way that he's come out about it, it isn't the right thing to do. Moving on from that, Wigan beat Hull 26-12. Good win for Wigan. Um, we were at um, World Club Challenge on Saturday. Um, Sydney Roosters beat St. Helens 20-12. Saints started pretty well, and that's to give it a good dig, mainly because of Alex Wormsley and Luke Thompson. They just didn't have that quality, did they, in the, maybe in the outside backs to finish. They had a few chances, didn't they, in the second half, where, you know, I know Makers had a tough chance, didn't they? And, um... we, we, we obviously did a video after the game on, on, on our first spot purge, um, and I think I mentioned there and then, at the time, I know it was 20 points to 12 to the Roosters, but... Even though there was only eight points in it, at no point in the game you felt like it was going to be out of the Roosters' hands. Yeah, if that makes they, sense. I, I don't. I don't feel like they ever. They ever got into a yeah. high gear. They were so, all playing in like second and third yeah. gear for. So like, no, no matter how many times Saints had the ball in the Roosters' line, the Roosters always had an answer for Saints. Yeah. Um, I think it was there was one point in the game. I think it might have been about about the ever mark where. Uh, they threw it wide to Tommy Makinson. Tommy Makinson normally catches that all day, finishes in the corner, but it just goes in front of Tommy Makinson and he ends up going in touch. But I think that was about Saints' best chance of yeah. drawing and level. Uh, and then a couple of minutes later, they went up the field with mm. Kiri and scored. And Wellesby went straight to Takiaho, the, the prop forward, who made the break. And we, we was thinking afterwards, should he have gone yeah, to Kiri? Because... Someone uh, else would have caught the Someone else would have caught the yeah. I mean, Tokyo hold the prop. And that's, well, I suppose well, that's one of them things where, obviously, probably. yeah, I mean, Saints had Wellsby, they had Costello, they had Bentley, they had Smith, four players, fairly inexperienced players in that team. If you replace them with maybe, with Coop, Percival, Grace, and, and you know, maybe it's, yeah, maybe it's different. Um, we'll probably have a debate about the World Club Challenge at another time. I'm certainly going to write a piece on it. Um, it was Challenge Cup weekend as well, I won't run through them results, but we have got the draw for the Challenge Cup fifth round. Um, to be fair, not the most inspiring of draws. Um, Toronto uh, drew Huddersfield at home, which will be played at Huddersfield. The other Super League teams entering a whole Kiara, you think have got a potential banana skin at home to Lee? Well, if, if you think of any upsets that, that could possibly occur in that fifth round draw, I'd certainly be tipping Lee to... To cause an upset at Hull KR, given how, how both team seasons have gone so mm. far, Leeds started very well. They're unbeaten, aren't they? In, yeah. in the Championship and, and obviously in the Cup, whereas at Hull KR are, are on a rocky road at the moment. I mean, 
it's one of them with Lukaku. Do you sacrifice the cut to concentrate on the league? Maybe. Um, another, well, I, I don't think they'd be disheartened if they went out, would they? Um, another potential upset, maybe Wakefield versus Bradford. Of course, Bradford had a few last season, beat Leeds. Mm, possibly. Um, they don't. I know it was twenty-two nil. It, it seems a pretty convincing scoreline, but they scored three quick tries against Underbank Rangers mm. uh, in the last round, and it was a pretty strong team that Bradford had out. Um, I think Wakefield will be happy with the draw because it's it's not a derby, but oh, it's cool. close. It's close enough, isn't it, and for, for the Bulls to take yeah. a big uh, travelling? That'll probably be on our league or BBC, or yeah. it, I suppose, with <laughs> a red button. Um, the other the other games in the draw: Witness versus Swinton, which is actually the only All Championship game, um, which they've done well to do. Sheffield against Workington, Newcastle against Whitehaven or Dewsbury. Now I believe there's a bit of a problem with that because Whitehaven and Dewsbury got called off at the weekend. Um, now, what we've seen in the previous round is they arranged the games for the following Sunday, but why even are due to play Toulouse this Sunday in the league? And so they couldn't cancel that because obviously all the flights and all that's being arranged. So there's all sorts of fuss going on. So I don't know when they're going to play that, but if whoever wins that game will be Newcastle away. That could be a banana skin. Yeah, obviously a yeah, championship obviously team out of League One side. Fe- Featherston against Hunslet, um, and then York against Rochdale. It's a tough draw for Oxdale, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, York had a good win at London at the weekend, actually. And that was another one where we seen the result come in and we thought, oh, if, if London maybe thought we need to concentrate on the league this season. Obviously, London aren't playing in the 1895 Cup either. Um, although Which they, they seem to be missing convert. I think they outscored York on tries, but missed the conversion. I think, I think it's a little bit um, bewildering, really, to think that London aren't competing in the 1895 Cup this year, especially considering the finals there's, at Wembley, you'd think that London would want to reach There's it plenty of teams that are not competing though, isn't there, in that? There's like, they yeah, drafted in some amateur teams. There, there's more teams than, than last year they not shouldn't, competing. They shouldn't be allowed to withdraw from it, I don't think. Um, looking ahead then to this weekend, absolute belting set up this weekend, Drew, because Thursday night you've got Hull KR Casford on Sky, Friday night you've got Leeds Warrington on Sky and then Saturday night you've got Toronto St. Helens on Sky. Well, I don't, All standalone and then yeah. you've got three Sunday games. No, I do, I do like the, the layout to the fixtures this week. I think the Thursday and Friday games should be standalone because everyone's eyes will be on the TV right. screens on Thursday and Friday. Um, are we going to have predictions now? Go on then, you can, uh, you can do. You go on think, Cass to beat Oakley. Yeah, yeah. Castleford to, to win at Oakley. Leeds to beat Warrington. No, I'll go Warrington to win at Leeds. Saints to beat Toronto. That's at Warrington as well, by the way. Saints to beat Toronto. I think it's on telly as well, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. yeah. Sky game. Um, Huddersfield, and then Sunday, Huddersfield, Wigan. Top of the table clash, James, already. Right. Um, Huddersfield's first home game as it, well. It is, but that, hey, that, that could be a little bit of bad luck for the Giants. Uh, I'll go with a Wigan win. Hull, Catalan. I think I go whole home advantage there. You've got to. I, I don't think I'll be back in Catalan many times away from home. Salford versus Wakefield is the other one. This is probably Salford the toughest call of the weekend. I'd, yeah, I'll go with Salford so, uh, to, to get home advantage. Um, in the Championship, we've got Batley Sheffield, Halifax against York, London against Featherston, Oldham against Bradford, Swinton against Lee, Whitehaven against Toulouse, and Dewsbury against Widnes, which is 6.15 live on the Owl League app. League One, um, there's four games in League One, which is peculiar because, oh no, it isn't, I've missed one, London Scholars are at home on Saturday, but the other games are Coventry, Newcastle, Doncaster, Barrow, West Wales, Hunslet and Workington. Keithley, um, enjoy your rugby league wherever you go this weekend, we certainly will. Thanks for tuning in, thanks to Sandy as well for coming in and talking all things Toronto. Um, keep it loverugbyleague.com for all your latest and we will see you next week.